Whether you're building trains, running trains, driving cars, making jigsaw puzzles, designing houses, or attempting to take over the world with diabolical chemical experiments, you can do it all with Meccano. Hi. If you want even more Meccano goodness, why don't you check out my Patreon channel? And please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. I post updates in the community section, not only for this week's Patreon build, but also for what I'm currently working on. Thank you, and back to the build. Hi, and welcome back. In my nearly 35 years of driving, I can count on one hand the number of times I've needed a tow truck. And the drivers always seem to fall into two groups. Either they are some of the most interesting and friendly people you will ever meet, or they are the grumpiest, bad-tempered sods out there. But either way, when you're broken down or crash, the tow truck is a wonderful sight. Unless your name is Josh, and you are forever immortalised on YouTube, having had your car towed. Don't be like Josh. But the automobile is a wonderful bit of engineering, from its earliest beginnings in Europe till it jumped the Atlantic and arrived in America. It has advanced so far from Bertha Benz first long distance drive nearly 140 years ago. The truck is such an embodiment of America. More so than any other country there is a link in America to the internal combustion engine and the dream of freedom. It's embedded in the songs, the storyline of just about every movie, that moment of escape that comes from the engine. My great uncle w would have known it as he vied for the land speed record against Seagrave and Campbell in the 1920s. I have known it myself at times, albeit when I was much younger, and the need to get a doctor to a casualty was a very real case of urgency. And as all things that we drive, there will be that point where it goes wrong. That moment where you both run out of luck and experience to deal with the problem at hand. And unless you're very lucky, as I've been on several occasions, to have someone stop and help you, you're going to need that tow truck to get you home. But where did it all start? Because unlike many things in life that have no beginning, they just are, and have always been there. Like for instance the Tuck Trowel, also known as the Brickies Trowel, that has no point of origin, but yet has been around for nearly 300 years. The tow truck does have a beginning point, and that is one man's dream to help to save people. In 1916, Professor John Wiley was driving his prized possession, his Model T Ford. Losing control of the Model T, Professor Wiley rolled the vehicle into a creek somewhere near Chattanooga, Tennessee. He contacted an ex-student, Ernest Holmes, to assist him in recovering the Model T. Mr Holmes, a mechanic from Chattanooga, arrived with a team of helpers, block and tackle and rope. It took eight hours to recover the car from the river and back up the hill onto the road. But it sparked the understanding that the need for a dedicated vehicle was apparent. Having at times had to manually winch objects, I can well imagine the problems faced with getting the vehicle out of the creek bed. Your first issue is to find anchor points, which are never where you want them, so you begin by compromising. One option is to manually anchor by driving posts into the ground and lashing them to each other. This gives you the ability to then attach a block and tackle. Today we have snatch blocks, which have replaced the original block and tackle. They do the same job, but are a lot easier to use. We also have kinetic ropes that, that have some given them, so don't cheer. Trust me, a rope that snaps under load is an awe-inspiring moment that makes you really rethink your life decisions. The, o the other option is to use nearby trees. The really big oak is always in the wrong place 
and the one that you end up using is just about always half rotten and falling to bits. But it's the only option. And then you have to find the second and third anchor points to really get the mechanical benefit of the pulleys. It took them all day to recover the Model T, but they managed it. And the vehicle was around two months wages for, for a professor at the time, coming in at around $350. Records show a professor earned around $200 a month. So recovery really was the only option. The design that Ernest Holmes painted it in 1918 was a twin boomed recovery vehicle. His first model was fitted to a 1913 Cadillac. He realised early on that the need to anchor the recovery vehicle to another object was essential, as the drag force of the vehicle being recovered could exceed the resistance of the weight of the towing vehicle. With this, the need of outriggers to provide additional support was discovered. And some of the first users of this new technology was the United States Army at the end of the First World War. And as mechanised warfare advanced, the need to recover vehicles also improved. The first Holmes tow truck was a Holmes 680, which was report, reputed to retail at $680 in, in the 1920s, around twice that of a Model T. He later went on to produce a cheaper model, the Holmes 485, which as you might have guessed had a price tag of $485. The company also supplied around 7,000 wreckers to the US government during World War II. The vehicle in the armed forces worldwide was forged into one role, the ARV, or Armoured Recovery Vehicle. But the lessons that were learned by Mr Holmes Sr. that were combined in his first model and patent of 1918 were very much at, at the heart of these vehicles. Out, out of interest, the Austrian-Hungarian Army, out of interest, the Austrian-Hungarian Army of 1908 produced the first recognised military recovery vehicle, the M08. But the designer, one Ferdinand Porsche, yes, that Ferdinand Porsche, didn't create the design. With the ability to lift, as it only had a winch fitted to the rear, with the belief that dragging would get most jobs done. And in the First World War, this probably was the case, as the initial tractor units were so heavy compared to the relatively lighter lorries being towed. And the modern military wrecker is, is so far removed from its origins as the American M984 Hemet is truly a monster of the battlefield. Also, the heavier variants of this model have the ability to swing the boom, in essence, turning the vehicle into a crane of sorts. The wheel lift, or spectacle lift, as they're known in Europe, is a simple lift fitted to the rear of the vehicle that is slid under the drive wheels of the vehicle to be towed. The, the wheel lift was the invention of Arthur Nelson of the Weld Built Body Company in the late 1960s. The, the integrated is a mix of both the boom and the wheel lift. It is also known as the Snatcher or Repro truck. And if you ever watched any American TV or even YouTube channels like GT Uga, at this point, I have to say, hashtag drum beats. You will, will be well aware of these trucks and how quick they operate. Earning them, their name of Snatcher is well deserved. The flatbed is probably the most common tow truck that you will see in the UK, with a tilting bed that can be lowered to the ground and then slid to the front of the car to be recovered, with a winch pulling the vehicle onto the flatbed. 
we also regularly see a hybrid of both this type and the next type, which also has a wheel lift fitted, allowing for more than one vehicle to be recovered. The last type has a high ab crane fitted, with a flatbed that's non-adjustable. This allows for a heavier load to be carried, compared to that of a tilting bed of the last model. You also don't have to worry about any damage caused by dragging the vehicle if the wheels are locked. So maybe Josh did have a point to make in his rant to Max. But I think his car was past being saved, to be honest. M Mr Holmes Senior passed away on Sunday the 10th of June, 1945, at the age of 62. He'd seen the development of his first designs to the monstrous W70, probably one of the most heavy duty tow trucks ever, with a lifting capacity of 70 tonnes. Only four were built for the US Army, and only one survives now. It is housed in the International Towing and Recovering Museum in Chattanooga, Tennessee, the birthplace where it all began over 100 years ago. All because a college professor rolled his car into a creek bed, leading to one man to see what was needed and to have the ability to create it. Without the foresight of unsung heroes like Mr Holmes Senior, key important links in the chain of history wouldn't be there. Like a lot of the history of automobiles, again and again America rises to the top of the pack as the developers of new technology. And it's great to be able to learn about how these things came into being. Because without them, it's a long walk back home, pushing your busted ass car the whole time. And if you need their services, be nice to the drivers. We don't need another Josh, even though it is quite funny to watch. <laughs>